When are you going to come to Miami? Uh, this week, this week. For real? Yeah, I just want to do that thing we talked about, and then, uh... Oh, yeah. Can I, can I leak it? No, because what if there's an error? Then they'll be like, yo, you didn't deliver. Like, I should sign every paper first. So can I ask, like, why, why have you been in Canada so long? Like, people are, there's conspiracy theories about, about why you're there. What, can you say the reason? Okay, I'll just leak it. If I put my head down for two months, I can just buy, lease that Lambo Urus from my streams. So I put my head down. It wasn't hard work, but it was creative. So I had to be like, you yeah. know. It took him three seconds to leak something that he just told me to not leak. It took him three seconds. Well, it's though. a great, it's a great idea, right? It is a good idea. It is a good idea. So that's what that's the reason you're that you're just like your home to stack up while, before you come back. Yeah, basically, if I get it in Miami, I can't bring it across the border, so I have to buy it here. Sneaker call Zerka said it's Zerka's enemy year. He has to relax. You you. These people, I actually want to call you, bro. Sneeko call Zerka. T put your Discord in the chat right now. I'm going to add you to the call. I had, it's been 14 hours straight now, of like back to back streams of you saying the same shit. What do you sound like? Are you a real human? Put your Discord right now. I'll add you right there. Did you watch the, the Haney Garcia fight? Yeah, that was the greatest. That for once, it was better than MMA boxing. The greatest shit I've ever seen on TV. That was crazy. I lost money. You bet on it? Yeah, I would have expected. You know what's funny? In chat, that you can agree. Haney Garcia is kind of like the boxing version of Sneeko and Zerka. You got the the Chris, the schizophrenic conspiracy theorist schizo, like doing um, our cocaine partying all the time. That's Ryan Garcia, and then the stoic Muslim who's who's just praying, right? So I'm Devin Haney, and you're Garcia. I would have thought that you would have bet on your on your pal he, he agrees with a lot of what you say and a lot of people were yeah, saying I, I would never i have never bet on religion i only bet on who's taking it serious so if someone's looking very strange during a camp like canelo switching to a vegan diet i'm not betting on canelo if he's switching up the recipe what the f so yeah but obviously i was pumped like jesus is king but damn did i lose my, you know that stung bad and and it sends a crazy message to the kids. You know that message? Like, just drink the beer, do the blow, and win the fight. It sends a horrible message. It, it sends like the Zerka message, bro. Wait, so are you uh, saying, I said the same thing yesterday. That sends a terrible message. I was watching that. I'm like, man, should I start drinking again? Should I do like party like Ryan? Is that the way to win? Because the Muslim fighters have been dominating. I was sure that he was going to win. How, yeah, it's a crazy, uh, how do you even answer it? You know, like it, it's a, it sends, a crazy message because like yeah Devin took it more serious but Ryan's been doing it all of his life too so you know they're both serious about it uh but yeah Devin do you, so is, do you think that you have a positive or negative impact on the people that watch your stuff yeah I, I have like results so thousands of people bettered their lives listening to me except one person named Fuzitube he was on a car ride with Amranth and he said, yeah, everyone watches Zerka. He was like at a thousand viewers at the time. He said, everyone watches Zerka. And before he finished the sentence, Amaranth said, because her and I don't really get along. We, we fight and stuff. She said, yeah, because all incels live through him, right? Like, because he's just this Chad alpha. And when he's, when she said that, I guess Fuzi had a crush on her. He froze on the clip. You can see the clip. And he starts staring out the window and it gets very awkward. And then he said, yeah, everyone only watches him because he does. And literally mm. next week, he starts doing rails and at 70,000 live viewers getting arrested. And so that's the first time my community said, look, everyone who listened to Zerka bettered their lives and went to Jesus. They didn't go to. But the content creator, Fuzi, 100% was inspired by that Bradley Martin podcast with Zerka because I heard behind the scenes stuff. And that's the first time I felt like, wow. I can affect an influencer, not really the ch the chatters know when I'm joking. That was insane. Like, yeah. Come on, he wasn't he wasn't doing. I never I was around Fuzi quite a bit IRL. I don't think you ever saw him IRL in that run. He wasn't doing drugs. I think he was pure. He I think he was high off chat. Really? You don't think he was on like stimulants? I don't maybe Adderall, but I I never saw any any 
I never saw that happen. But we know that he was on Adderall before. I miss him, man. I, I wonder... He's the best. He's the best to ever stream. Like, he's the only guy who got me watching every minute. Remember, I was like, man, this is stupid. And then he slapped the child, and I said, oh, my God. That was the best contest since then. But I, I saw one phone call. It's funny that this happened, that Ryan Garcia recently talked to him, and he just said, stop being a pussy. Like, hey, stop being... Because I've been talking to Fousey, like, non... You know, every couple of weeks since he stopped streaming. And I'm like, hey, man, we miss you. Like, I'm, I'm being really sympathetic to him. I'm like, oh, it's good. Like, we're praying for you. We're making dua for you and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm not feeling good. Ryan gets on the phone with him and he's just like, stop being a... And then he started like something... Part of that, the guy that slapped Jack woke up again when he heard that on the phone. He's like, oh, he started to go... Because oh, he that has that. Before. No, that was after. That was, that was like two weeks ago. That was the first time where I saw a glimpse of like Fousey back as himself again. Because he does have that like alpha male thing within him. A lot of time it does because sometimes he does like the fruity thing. Sometimes he has like a lot of different personality traits at once. But it's see, I, and I saw that at first. I'm like, why are you going to be mean to Fousey? But then I thought like maybe that this is probably the right way to go and get somebody out of a funk. Instead of being sympathetic and like crying about it and praying for you constantly. And like, oh, but you need to get somebody to bully you to become yourself again. It's so simple for Fuzi. If he has two people around him full time just to guard him from the electricity going too much, he will be the number one content creator within like a couple of weeks. But the problem is there's no job like that on earth to babysit an electric grown up that can manifest views that at that rapid master builder pace. Basically, who's going to do that job? And like, I'll say this, this is going to sound crazy. If Fuzi paid a fat annual salary to one dude to just physically restrain him when it's getting too much, he'd make like $10 million. But no one would do that business plan of like hiring a full-time nanny, you know? But uh, And it would never Fuzi's work because the bodyguard would never know how much he's supposed to restrain him and how much he's supposed yeah. to allow him. There's It's something that you just need to do yourself. Like you can't, it's, it's lightning in a bottle. You can't capture it. The right way and release it the right way did you see it before the fight the heaven uh the haney garcia fight some people were saying that oh ryan garcia must have seen the sneako zerka stream because you were talking last stream about we were talking about music and i don't think he saw the stream but we were talking about music and how something like orchestral music like mozart beethoven can uplift the spirit before the fight haney's listening to rap music and garcia is listening to uh classical music he even had an orchestra come play in the back room yeah, and he talked about his numerology on that podcast. Did he? Yeah, he what watches he... a lot. He he, know, he watches a lot of my stuff, but he's been boxing since a kid, so I get zero credit, right? But I I did say. Remember when I said sevens have mystical awakenings, spiritual awakenings? They kind of go a little crazy when it, they're going through it, but eights punch hard, kind of like Jake Paul, um, or. 22s fuzi master builder is the most electric energy if fuzi goes and doesn't stop he's number one but that you crash out like that so Fu if someone can figure out fuzi you've got a hundred million dollar business plan right there uh because if you notice fuzi's just go or stop and Sneeko, you're the opposite you've been consistent i've never seen you take a break no, I'm, I'm always, I stay consistent. I have to always be working. That's the difference between streamers like Neon and Fuzi is that they need to be like loud and always like they're pretty much a slave to their chat. I noticed that today with the stream specifically, like I don't need to be a slave to my chat in order to make good content. I'm better, like I, I know how to maintain myself and it, it's, it's a performance to some extent. Like when I bring that energy, it's like, it's not, it's performative. It's not really who I am. When Fuzi is in that mode, that's him. When Neon is in that mode, that's who he is. And he's a slave. Like, he has to do exactly what the chat is saying. But I don't really need to. I can, I can go in and yeah. out, and I know how to turn it on and off. Um, it is you, too. Like, Jung said something interesting. He said, if you're coach, therapist, or teacher, if all three of those people call you, every time you pick up the phone, you do a different tone of voice. Because you, you don't have just one persona. You have, like, ten in you. One for your parents, when you're around them. And you don't notice this tone shift and this energy shift, one with girls. So when you realize there's like 10 different Sneekos in Sneeko, it's very stupid to say that's not the real me. They're all a bit of you. You got to reconcile them between all of them. So the healthiest thing I did is, okay, I'm embarrassed to say this stuff because I, I don't want my parents hearing, 
I'm going to be the most extreme on the internet. I'm going to say to my parents, this is just what it is. I know you guys are like classy. You don't talk, you don't yell, but this is what it is. I went fully naked and, you know, it was like a lot of trouble. But now I, I live my deepest myth. I get to be my full self every day because all those 10 masks in the, in the Zerka psyche, they all swear. They're all kind of the same. They're all right. But now if you're very different, you know, like you have a podcast voice, a content creator voice, a voice, just try and get the voices to sound similar and you'll feel authentic. How do you get them to sound similar? I think uh, a lot of people are right now resonating with what you're saying, but they probably don't even realize that they have like 10 different versions of them. Some people call it code switching. Like I notice, I speak differently around whites and blacks. When I talk to you, I, I have a different, I, I'm very aware of that because I'm constantly doing content. So I'm able to hear it and actually tell when the personalities it's, turn off and it, on. That's why I get it, called the grifter, but most people don't are, are not even aware that they have that. Chad, it's really simple. If it serves a greater purpose, switch. So, for example, Sneeko would never say this. He's a good friend. But, you know, I look like his when we're alone together, when we're just chilling us two. I sit there like it's a therapy session and I talk to him like, you're the content creator who did everything you wanted to do. I'm on the come up and the whole language is me trying to get info. What did you do this? What about when you were in New York with that black chick and you were doing riots? The whole language is... Okay, this is a high level businessman. I'm only going to do business with Sneeko because he, that's what he's going to teach me. But if I sat with Sneeko, like, let's get some and some whores and some, what the do I learn doing that? I could do that with some drug dealer downtown, bro. So if I go to someone and they have a mastery over something, content creation, whatever, I'm literally going to sit down and talk to them about, hey, when I, hey, I, I'm banned. What did you do when you got banned? Stuff like that benefits me. But that's not, the full me, the full me is also you know, and yelling and shit, but it would be a waste of my time if I'm doing like, if I'm farming that kind of fun and learning nothing. Like with Myron, I talk about, I talk to him about property and you know, he knows all about that stuff. Yeah, it would be stupid to talk to Myron about like- About anything you know, else besides then try to get information, right? But that's not being a that's just use it. That's just having a good. No, but I, why, why I use that language is a lot of people think when I go to Sneeko's place, we're just chilling on the balcony and shit talking. A lot of people think it sounds like a podcast where we were just yelling and arguing. No, it doesn't. It sounds like a Jedi master with the Jedi Padawan. And I'm new to YouTube. This, this guy portaled me. He said, come through the fresh fit portal. So you, you gotta, you can't be like Andrew Tate who goes, oh, I'm better than you. I'm better. You gotta know who's better than you. Now, if Sneeko talks about picking up women, he's my son. I'll teach him. But if we're talking <laughs> about business, if we're talking about business and go to the next level, uh, I don't know if I should give Sneeko anything. Like, if he gave me, if he asked me for advice, I don't think I'd even respond. My first instinct, I think I've done it before. My first instinct is always, are you stupid? You've been doing this 10 years over me and $5 million contract. And why are you even having this conversation? And Sneeko does this weird thing where he asks, a lot of times he says, well, what should I do? Because he's so humble. He'll ask Mohammed a job. So what should I do with my life? So this, what should I? He'll ask like 10 different people this just to see their perspectives. This is like Socratic thinking. This is smart. But it's also like 90% of the people Sneeko asks, well, what do you think I should do? 90% of the time, the guy is much lower level than Sneeko. It makes no sense. And it's like, it's not superficial to know your place. So if but I, I think around, it's important to hear different perspectives. See, I, I don't think in terms of levels, because even if somebody like is theoretically at a lower level, you can still take the information that they give you and nope. be able, no, no, but you can still use it based on where they're at in life, right? You don't need to go and apply it immediately. You're like, okay, he's saying this because he's at this Bro, point. You sound like you chill with your high school buddies. Do you chill with your high school buddies? Not as much anymore. Not as much anymore. They're full. Bro, one in the chat, if we love them to death, but everyone we went to high school with, they got nothing to teach us. Do you avo avoid them like the plague, bro? But it's avoid interesting. Them. Like, I like asking questions to people like that because then you get to see, it's just interesting to see where they're at in life and how they respond in a similar situation, right? E even though you're not gonna apply it directly, like, okay, he's saying this because he's in this nine to five job. Like you get to understand uh, why they think the things they think, what they believe, where they're at. I think that's asking people for advice is really asking for their perspective and you get to see the world through their lens. And then that's right, the, but that's you're not, you're not, that's like saying you can get psychic development from anyone. 
I think so. I think you can. Really? You I mean, ever you ever ask a simple question to like a woman, for example, like it, say sometimes I'd be editing a video and I'm stuck on something for hours and hours and hours. I show it to a girlfriend that I'm with and she's like, why is that green and not blue? Like I'm trying to figure out how to go and paste the song <laughs> with this. And then she asks something. She says something so insignificant, but you didn't see it from that perspective because you're autistically hyper focused on how the video is constructive and the balance and the audio decibels. She says, that should be green, not blue. And you're like, yeah, it should. Something that you would not have noticed because you're not seeing it from their lens. But, seeing you know, things I, from I don't buy this at all because remember when you're doing New York and you were the vlogger, like there was cringe vlogging and then there was that quick cuts, perfect lighting New York that everyone knew, Sneakle. I promise you, no one, helped you with that shit it was all your vision because that style didn't get replicated ever right did it did someone copy some, it? some people no. uh, will do it you could see with the fisheye lens every time i see the fisheye lens uh... no i tried i got i hired your editors those scamming and i you're not with them anymore but i hired them they did a vod you know everyone loved the new york zirka content and i remember watching it i'm like you know thanks guys but as soon as i ended the call i'm like it doesn't look like art. It just looks like a edited video. But they scammed you. That was Needles. That's my cameraman. Now he edited Bro, your New York vlog. Sneakles New York would be like, you know, I always wondered since a kid and you'd see the ocean and I'm like, oh, we're getting into the emotions. Then he'd hit a joke and it was like an art form. And my VOD was, it was just a vlog. And I said, I hired his editors and they couldn't do it. That's when I'm like, I'm pretty sure you just told them what the fuck to do. They no, that I, I edited my own videos and like I, I, I showed them how to do it. But the thing you that, went to school for it. I actually I've been realizing that film school, even though I say college is a scam, I actually did a learn a lot in film school. Sneakle without film school would literally be wiping toilets. That editing style, whatever, obviously the students he was, had class with, none of them popped off like Sneakle because they didn't have a passion for it. They were just going to class. Bro, Sneakle, I'm telling you, if you didn't get that skill set, you would have been uh, like me, just our Logitech and trying to make it from a shit room and shit. You know, like it, it would have been so dumb. You know, college is a scam, but in the two years that I went to film school, I didn't even finish, obviously. There's two more years. I did learn a lot. I, I've been, every time I edit a video, I'm working on one now. It's like, there's so many things that I, that I learned and I applied. And even the way that I watch movies and TV shows now have completely changed because of film school. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but you're right. You know, I, I hadn't showed enough appreciation to it because ultimately like the degree is a scam, but sometimes I miss having that sort of lens and, and appreciation Chad, for it. Chad, look at the difference. If he didn't go to film school, he would have been at a hundred viewers on some platform. Then in a few months, cause he's funny at a thousand, then 2000, then the guy skyrocketed to the top because the skill set is, man, I'll tell you this. I spent 27 years of my life never paying to upgrade skill set. I'll just learn. I'll just find someone else. Pay who you become learning. Go to skillshare.com. Develop skills, bro. Even if it's not your true calling, who you become. Oh, shit. I learned how to edit video. Now I can do this. I'll tell you this, man. People think, oh, Zirka sounds good on a mic. He's good on podcast. He'll crack like two mil while everyone else gets 100,000 views on a Bradley. That's practice. It was like a year and a half of podcasting I did at a thousand viewers on Twitch and I would rewatch my podcast and I'm like, if I cut all the fat out of my language, everyone's going to watch me. And because that's the, like, bro, Kai is cool. A lot of fat in his language. Chat, chat, I, uh, uh, uh. And I just don't have the patience for that. Uh, most streamers take like an hour to get to their point. Sneakle can sense when he's getting bored, when chat's getting bored and he'll go boom, right, hit it. But there's a sense of narcissism. You have to watch your own shit. And the number one rule, never watch when you suck at content. If you only watch your golden moments, you go live and you're funny, you're fast, you're calm, you're smart, you're everything. If if you do what you do and they watch the bad clips, oh, this VOD sucked, this podcast sucked, and the good clips, you go to this middle ground of shit. That's why I say it's like, it's like if you're... Uh, I think you'll have more success playing football. You record yourself, you see your mistakes, you understand it, but you have more success focusing on your strengths. You go, damn, I really hit the ball from here. It's always in the net. Focus on your winning. Do you want to focus on positive or negative? Which, it's magnets, bro. Which magnet do you want? 
And I'm an old man. So what I'm saying, I've tested it and I've done everything the wrong way. Now, the first thing I ever said to Sneeko, I said, as you're, he's the first guy to switch from documentary to streaming, which when he first did that, I'm like, whoa, he looks like he's been streaming 10 years. He, there's no pauses. There's no jinxy cringe. There's He literally, Chet, choker, choker. And then uh, remember when he was doing that? And I, w I was shook because everyone's like, yo, he's been streaming two weeks and he sounds literally like the streamer world. But if you watch YouTubers go live, you hear the clicking sound of them playing the game and they're at 100 viewers and they're boring as fuck. And he's the only one to just switch and actually take over our game. But I remember I said the dumbest thing Sneeko ever did, he let go of that creative aspect of documentaries. He let go of it for years. And then the blade got dull. Then he went back to it. Bro, if you're a black belt at something, never let go. Are you retarded? I didn't let go. Just people don't see it because I've been bad. I still make those videos. But uh, you, you probably... now your heart's not in it. When you're when no, you're no, no, I, time, it, oh. it is. That's true. When you're shaving. But when I first started, I would do month on month off so I could still hone in on on those videos too. Uh, what would you recommend for like you're saying a lot of things that that make a lot of sense and I want to give people some good advice. How would you how would you teach people to go and learn how to speak more concise and, and have that emphasis on everything they say? Because I'll have a Twitter space with the love speech community and you can hear them talk and there's absolutely there some so many of them are just boring to listen to. And having that as a skill is, is one of the most valuable things that you can have, especially with business now. So much of doing business is just being entertaining and being comfortable to be around. If you can, if you're pleasant, if you're an enjoyable to be around, you can make a lot more money than a lot of more people with other skill sets. And I listen to some of these people, they don't have any passion, they don't speak concise, they don't know how to get their points out in the right way. What do you think is the best way to do that? I, I wanna say mine first, because you, you did point out that I was able to, to turn into a streamer really quickly. And I think what I did was, you're right, I, I studied myself. I watched back everything I did immediately. I'd stream and then watch it back, look at the highlights. I would study things and figure out how to say things in a way that could be cut up for a TikTok. I think speaking for TikToks helped me do things more rapidly because I wanted everything to be clipped. But also I studied the best streamers and I, I cut out all the fluff, like what the best streamers do, like I show speed is the, is, uh, is the perfect example of that. He, can, he does a good job of bringing in energy into the camera. Even though he's not the best speaker, he's not going to be great on a podcast. He knows how to convey the energy into the camera the same way an actor conveys an emotion in a movie scene. Like he, he brings a real feeling like his, the facial expressions and the way he's expressing himself. He can channel it directly to the audience by turning his life into and his feeling into the performance. Right. He's yeah. turning emotion uh a real emotion into the performance. So it's his life is like intrinsically tied to the stream. And so when I saw that, it's like, okay, you don't need to overthink what you're saying on a stream. It's all about channeling a certain energy. So I would, I would watch certain content like whores being stupid so that I can get like the red pill rage and then deliver that red pill rage to the camera, start choking the camera and, and, and screaming about bots. Once I figured out how to do that, then I, I made millions of dollars. How do you think the person who's watching this right now can learn how to properly do that because that's one of the most effective skills you could have nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree with speed is number one. Like I think if you took the top five streamers on earth or let's say XUC, Aiden, Kai, if you combine them, they're still not at speed's level because I don't like speed's content, but I watch it for speed. He always sucks me into it. And I'm like, old man, this is not my shit. So I'm like, how come he's the only kid who can do that? That's like magic. I don't, I don't even want to dissect speed. I don't know how the he does that and he's funny too he's like the face he makes is hilarious but my highest paid guy the dude that i changed his life all i did was i said look you're podcasting and all that you suck at grab a two-hour vod edit it to only when you were funny or informative so it was four minutes long like it was tiny because i kept saying this is garbage this is garbage be honest with yourself and it was at four minutes and he kept doing this till it was like a 20 minute VOD. And then I'd say, okay, before you go live, you're going to watch the whole VOD. And it's you just making banger joke, banger joke, good lesson, informative, banger joke, engagement. But if you watch the five hour VOD of him sucking, 
you don't know you're you're programming yourself to suck you it's like ritualistic you should see only the wins and have like you do a two-hour vod condense it condense it to 10 minutes and then that's how your two hours should be like those 10 minutes of perfect and people are like well Zerg, are you saying anytime you go on a sneako stream you don't miss a beat and you're perfect you're informative you're hilarious you're yes i am <laughs> um that's that's but I, I disagree i you're saying that you shouldn't look at the negative things uh because you should only download the the best parts of the content i think that's because you have more of an ego attachment to what you do than i do i'm able to kind of relinquish that and but you have more inhibition than me because you watch your bad moments they it increases inhibition why how uh because it it loops like it, even when you're showering you'll think of the the L's right. I don't think about I, I it's like studying tape as a, as an athlete when you're an athlete you see every, you see the bad plays as well you're able to like I, I've learned how I was able to like perfect my form and um get a little bit better at boxing was to see like okay well I, I'm punching too high because I'm tall I'm punching up here and so I'd watch that and I'm like why am I doing that I'm punching up here so I I, I brought it down here you know you you don't see just the best punches. Right. Even then, yeah, like I'll when watch you're, when you're when you're finishing someone in a box fight, let's say, you really want to focus on your good com combinations and good moments, because that's what should be playing in your head when you're about to take the whole fight. Like you think Ryan Garcia doesn't watch a highlight reel of all of his knockouts before he goes in there? You think he watches himself get cracked hard before he goes in there? I'm talking about game day when you go live. Game day cannot have one one negative thought and. I'm telling you, the difference from Sneeko and me, I look delusional confident because I don't really watch my L's. They're there. But he watches his L's. He's always like, maybe if I ask this guy for advice and this guy, that shit. Do what serves you, man. How much ego do you think you have? And I think you have something similar to uh, to Neon and Fousey where you have more of an ego attachment to all this than... I I've been able to relinquish a lot of that. Right Earlier in my career, I had more of it like where my self-worth was tied to... To the content and everything i do but now i've been able to not care as much and that that made me better at doing it because it, if it, it, wants it removes, to have a, a flawless, it removes the pressure check this out if sneeko wants to have a flawless fresh and fit performance he just needs to see a highlight reel and it's healthier if he picks the highlight reel than youtube because he's the one generating the jokes it's not the, the chat doesn't really know what's funny they follow sneeko and he kind of forces them that way but if Sneeko watches an hour of him crushing it with not one second of error and then goes on the podcast, he's literally going to sound the same as the guy crushing it. There's not going to be, oh, what? well, this girl kind of got loud, so I maybe shouldn't piss her off. And No, full speed ahead. What the Why do you think uh, Ryan Garcia won the fight? Because we both thought Devin Haney was going to win. What's the psychology behind that? Uh... I don't want to talk shit, but this, I just sound like an asshole when I speak. Um, De First of all, he's faster, bigger, stronger, more power. But also, Devin doesn't have weight to his hands. So you could tell in the later rounds, Garcia was totally safe, right? And But but to me, it was kind of strange because I, I come from a world where it's like, why was he flexing missing weight? I've never seen that. Like, should you flex that? Well, because that was the main reason that he believes that he lost to Javante Davis. Abdul and I believe him. Everyone gaslight, gaslit the shit out of him and said he's making excuses. But did you see the side-by-side -side photos? I saw the side-by-side -side and I thought that he was just making excuses too until the, the main difference in his performance had also seen the side-by-side. -side. Like when I saw yeah. him on the, the PBD podcast, he was making, he was saying that like, oh, the rehydration calls, rehydration calls. I'm like, he's coping because he lost. Now and was he? We were coping. He wasn't coping because check this out. Tank is obviously the best from all these guys, even with a hydrated Ryan, in my opinion. But he wasn't coping because even Tank was running away or clinching up from a dehydrated Ryan. And Ryan doesn't have like their footwork and their skill set, but power is the great equalizer. And he said it great when he said, you know, they say I only got this fucking left hook, but you know, God bless this hand. And that's when I realized, I'm like, he did? It's like he watched a highlight reel of his left hand and went and went to work. Because I'm like, there's no way Haney doesn't see this. They kept saying a one-trick pony. And then I'm like, wow, he just stuck to the positive. He didn't really think of his weaknesses.
That was great. I don't think he should do it for... I think he should take the preps more serious for the next fight. But it's, it's cool seeing a big Jack Ryan. I didn't realize how skinny he looked against Tank. Um, but I still see Tank winning that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, the rematch should happen soon. I was wondering for a while. I was like, what does he do? Because did you see when he called me out too? Wait, he, he got upset when... Uh, before, like a couple of weeks ago, he was he, he called me out to a fight. You didn't see that. What, what was that about? Because uh, he found the clip of me on Pearl's podcast talking about the uh, rituals and, and Catholicism, about how you guys eat the body of Christ and drink the blood of Christ, and he's like, uh -huh. he, he got really upset about that. I was wondering, like, if he was taking a career path. This is what Mohammed Ajab said. He's like, guys like Ryan Garcia and Strickland, they see a shelf life with their career, so they're trying to angle their way into influencer boxing because there's only so many more fights that they can actually take. And UFC people, for example, they don't, they barely make, how much do they make a fight? Like Sean Strickland has level for a championship. What he's making half a mil, half a yeah. mil a fight. And you're maybe he's fighting twice a year or most. And that's before taxes. Ultimately, like at the top, top level of MMA, you're not even making that much money at all. You're making yeah. far less than a, than a top streamer. So they're seeing the longevity in their career, the head damage that they're taking, they might as well go find a right way to angle themselves to go fight Jake Paul and really get the bag. Well, the, the Jake Paul thing is interesting because we all say, yo, Mike is too old for that. But Jake's right. Who the f*** is going to turn down like $20 million Netflix? You know what I mean? Everyone in this chat would fight, fight that old Mike as Jake. So I was like, damn, if I talk shit about Jake Paul here, I'm being kind of phony because imagine they said you got to fight Mike Tyson for $20 million. I think everyone would take that. Most people, you ditch Strickland for fun. Yeah, I should have made money off that. I mean, 100%, everybody's going to take He's getting a lot of criticism. You mentioned you mentioned XQC earlier. Why? I, I can't figure this out. I don't know if you're seeing all the things where he's, he's like defending stuff. Why is XQC famous? I don't get it. You come from the Twitch world. I, I've seen his stuff. I, the captivating thing is the games that he's playing, really. I don't get how someone like him, you mentioned him as top three. Why is he top three? Mm, yeah, I don't like XUC at all, but he's extremely talented in entertainment. Like, wow. He can, man, I still remember when he was getting 10,000 viewers and that was big back then. But I don't watch XUC, but let's, let's just be honest. When streamers have a call and they put a chatter on the stream, the chatter always ruins the vibe. It gets very weird. And you see that 99% of society will not perform in front of that camera. XGC can talk for 12 hours a day. And it's not like looping. It's not repetitive. It's like, you know, he can, if I stay there, I'll kind of start getting sucked in. XGC is extremely talented. Like, let's make no mistake about that. But also he has to guard his, uh, you know, his psyche puts up a guard for topics because he's on camera kissing men, right? So there's something he regrets. Like, you, anyone else think a straight guy like XUC, he has to regret this stuff. I don't think he regrets it. I think he, I think he keeps on doing it. I think he actually believes in what he talks about. I'm not sure. I, I don't, I don't come from the Twitch world. So I actually believe all these people. Like, I believe Hassan Abi believes what he talks about. I believe Destiny believes what he talks about. I think that that's their, their worldview. But what, and I don't mean this as a hater. I don't understand it. What is the tap? Like, what is the appeal? For him just compare him to a chatter if you put a chatter in xqc's room everyone would leave there's something like his yapping works he, even jinxie's yap, yapping works and i don't like jinxie jinxie like makes him. sense because he's high energy he's doing the speed face he's up in the camera he's cracking i don't i, I don't know oh, you're saying felix has like four hours of his stream where he's just kind of yeah you're right you're right i'm talking about when he's hype i've seen xqc have some takes where they, there's energy there bro i'm 90 percent of streamers are boring XUC at least brings energy sometimes. He'll argue. He'll call people poor, stuff like that. I like that. But uh, there, a lot of people have said that, you know, that slightly good-looking white guy syndrome. Like, if, if you just look like XUC, a lot of people are like, oh, I relate to you, bro, because I was that weird kid in class. Oh, XUC is not the weird kid in class. He literally banging Karina Koff with millions of dollars. You, the chat is fooled to think that they, they relate to XUC. And they don't realize that in this world, in the content world, he would be the Chad and the Chad would be the losers. But he has that relatability. Like, I'm just a nerd like you guys. Have you seen how many people do that? I'm just like one of you guys. 
It's like when streamers pretend to be into anime and can't name five Dragon Ball characters. It's very cringe. But, but if that was his appeal, then then why is the the joke always like I'm rich and you're poor? He is rich. Everyone else is poor next to him. It's true. So so why if he's trying to be relatable, how does that benefit him saying that all the time? He, we, it doesn't matter because they saw the nerdy kid XUC who has night terrors make it, so it, it gave them that hope. But XUC is very slimy because he doesn't tell his chat to start a channel. I think you're the only one who does that. He keeps them in that spell. And it's very weird. Like, I think if someone's watching you, they relate to you. And they want something you have. They, you know, they want your life, or, right? If someone relates to you, the best thing you could say is start your channel if you sound like Zerka. If you sound like Sneeko, do it like Sneeko. But XUC and these guys will just chat, just chat, just keep donating. just. And also, he kisses men for that financial advantage to be around those liberal elites so i think xcc is the greediest streamer i've ever seen in my life because he knows millions of those kids are going to kiss men and regret it he yeah that's what he's doing that's his cope with it is that um like oh yeah i kiss men but i'm rich so like yeah, yeah i've made look how much money i made by doing something that i know i shouldn't be doing but xcc is also like a good influence because he'll do 15 hour streams for three years straight that's hard work that's good shit no that is that that's commendable for sure but you're right about creating that echo chamber and keeping people within a spell we don't have that like i always try to we have guilt we have guilt i have bro. the guilt yeah I, I want people to leave with something i want them to be inspired motivated i want them to leave with something good like i want their lives to be better i i, I don't know that's not like a moral high ground i just don't understand how you could turn the camera on speak to people and not do that so I always yeah. have that pressure to try to like bring something to the audience. What, what do you think is, is your, I've been thinking about this a lot. What's your number one problem that you noticed? Like if you, you did this call earlier uh, with your community, uh, what is the one thing that they, they're lacking that they need? It's always, it always goes back to experience. Like remember when you were hunting for experience in the ratchet sewers of New York? Thank God you had some years there, right? If you didn't have that experience, it's kind of like an empty book. Like people are like, yo, how do I build an identity? I'm like, the chaos is gonna build your identity. Like Zerka working five years in nightclubs for $15 an hour. Thank God I was active, masculine in motion and didn't stay at home. But $15 an hour for five years, what the f was I doing? And now after talking to that many women in nightclub, I sell that shit, I get so much money. It's like great. I wouldn't have a website if I didn't do five years of $15 an hour. So, and people are like, did you do that deliberately and to talk, meet girls? And no, I had no other job to do. Go into the work, even if it's not your calling, the chaos will form you. The chaos, the lessons you experience in the real world. And real world is like, uh, I have a job. I'm a part of one community. Healthy people are, part, are a part of 10 communities. A healthy person will be like a therapist, has a place on a soccer league or has a soccer team with his buddies, a girlfriend, uh, friends, that's four communities total, four different varying opinions that crisscross and stuff. You don't understand that being a part of a community is you failed because a healthy person is a part of four to eight communities. I I have antisocial problems. That's why people always say this guy has so much opportunity with these big streamers and he always it up to be alone. Like Fuck off, leave me alone. But if I didn't join that twitch community i would do 15 dollars an hour for the rest of my life that's one community that saved me and i'm an idiot because i stayed with one community for years you want to have multiple communities right that's how your brain stays like plasticky right mm -hmm. that's why when people say get your life together get a girlfriend get a job uh stay with friends this isn't just like fortune cook fortune cookie advice this is a bunch of different psyches meshing make forming yourself it forms you and you shouldn't actively build yourself you go into the real world the chaos of whatever the f happens to you whatever happens to you in the pokemon adventure that builds you right if it was as easy as well i just want to build myself that's f that's like hustler culture i don't want to like diagnose from what i get because i have a lot of zerka fans in the chat ever since it, you came back on i it seems like there's a a lot of white guys are disenfranchised, like that fight club mentality where the white guy is, they, you know, like the fight club thing where like white guys will punch each other in the face just to feel something. 
I, I, I get the sense that there's a lot of, like, some of your diehard fans are those guys. Like, white guys who have no hero. They're tired of being called school shooters and pussies. <laughs> like, they're tired of getting emasculated by black guys. And so they, they see somebody like you who are spamming the N-word and saying Crisis King, and they kind of live vicariously through you. So do, do you, if, if you get a lot of those white guys, which you probably do, how do you tell them to go and get experience? I, was, I think I, that New York was the best place to gain a lot of life experience because New York City is a melting pot. You get people from all different walks of life. I lived in, um, in the projects. I lived in shitty apartments. I, I was in a lot of... But why? Why would you choose the most dangerous jungle on earth like Trump's Haven? When were you like, I'm a little boy and my first Pokemon adventure is not... It's not going to be this small town or LA. I'm going to do New York. Something because I was like, I was born in New York. Something. I was born in what? New York City. No, you born, weren't. I was born in Manhattan on 14th Street. You grew up in New York? Not most of the time, like Brooklyn, but then mostly in Connecticut. So I, I always had oh, that. Like, what the fuck? I always I had that. that. Yeah, I always had that thing where, you know, like, oh, the best directors come from New York City. The best artists come from New York City. Let me be in the jungle, the concrete jungle, right? Because not only do you have, like, the slums, you have, like, the you Bronx. Just said it. You just said it. The best movie makers are from New York and all that stuff you said. The Pokemon adventure, Ash Ketchum wants to go to the league. Your league was m movies, right? Or someone's league might be acting. That's Hollywood. And people are like, you guys don't understand, man. I went to America and in two weeks, my whole life changed. Just internationally famous, money, everything. And I spent years in this room saying, ah, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. But my bro that therapist brother I have, she, I just woke up one day, everything was packed and it, uh, there was a plane ticket. And he said, get the f out. I said, bro, this is my place. What the? You, you just have a key. You just came from his girls. I said, get the f out, bro. It's been years. Yeah, you made a bit of coin here, but get the f out and go do it. And then I went broke. I went totally broke for the first two weeks. It was around that time. That's exactly when I met you. And then I'm like, yo, bro, I'm literally going to zero again because I spent a year traveling with that girl and all that shit because the COVID locked me up, made me crazy. And he said, stay. Stay broke, stay in debt, whatever. Did you're not ending this adventure? And then within a couple of weeks, I was like, "Yo, Broski, we're famous. We're on Fresh Fit. We're doing it all." And he said, "I told you to leave that room. You should have done this years ago." And I have like that insult, antisocial thing, you know? Like th I was so happy when I had a Twitch stream and a thousand viewers because I'm like, finally, I don't have to leave this room. But that's like running from responsibility, you know? Like I'm the greatest entertainer that's ever lived. And I'm not even trying. I should leave this room. Isn't it one in the chat if it's sad that I'm here right now and not in Miami? Isn't it sad? It's like yeah, seeing yeah. a caged tiger. Yeah, you gotta you gotta take that poster down and just come to Miami already. But check this out. What makes someone leave the room? If the chat didn't leave the room for a year and a half and I'm institutionalized, if I didn't do it and I'm the most extroverted, if I was running away from leaving the room, what chance do these chatters have? They need something, bro, you need something freak to happen. You need to just pick up your shit and leave. Don't, if you think about it, you'll never pack that luggage. You need to leave and people are like, well, I don't know if I have the money right now. You'll never have the money, you stupid if you think like that. You need to take big risks, man. You need to and throw yourself you guys... into the chaos, which was like, that was the, the major thing, like making the decisions to drop out of college. Even though I, you know, admittedly, I did learn a lot in film school, taking that leap of faith and deciding like, let me go, jump head first into the chaos is good. And New York is a good place to do that because you get all different types of wealth. You get all the high rises where Trump is, and then you also get the, the poor people. So you get to see all different types of, all different levels of capitalism all packed into one place and experience but you also the world. Did, you did the highest level of chaos because like, imagine Sneeko just fin f finishing school and then he's in the middle of riots filming it risking jail, risking attacks and all this shit. And he was famous, people were recognizing him. Nobody does that. When have you ever seen someone do that? Never, they usually go out with a group of friends. Sneakle's big risk, biggest reward of his life. That's the most brave shit. Imagine just being Sneeko, you're just like some Hey guys, I'm a good looking Nike model and you know, I go for a run sometimes. And then he puts himself into literally a people cage. You're in with Guys, and everyone's just robbing shit. And Sneeko's like, ah, oh, I'm happy I can hang. I don't, I wouldn't even go to those <laughs> riots. I wouldn't go. I would be like, fuck that, I'm terrified. Why? Right, because the, the, you understand that like men don't get respect unless they have to, unless they go through something that's difficult.
Like you have to. Yeah, go but check this out. Who did that kind of content? Who was your? It was a monopoly. Everyone, big muscular dudes were afraid to do that kind of content. So you just robbed the game. And that's why I say never start a business unless you see it as like, oh, I can have a monopoly on this bitch. Ne you never go into a business where you don't see yourself like, wow, I'm the only one actually risking this. You know, that's now if you're right taking there. if you're taking big risks in a competitive market, that's kind of there's a lot of markets that people are afraid to touch. They go for easier shit. But now check this out. You also got to know when to leave. If Sneeko stayed in that market, 100 percent, he would have been stabbed one in the chat. 100% a famous dude going that hard saying and all this, he would have been hurt. So he knew exactly when to just leave. But there are personalities like me that never leave. Say, oh, we made a million views here. Well, let's stay on the riot. And you got to know when the party's done. And Sneeko has this weird itch. Like, I got to go to the next level. Dude, men don't have that anymore. Like Sneeko sits down. What? I'm at 4K views? Okay, we're going up to Colombia. We're going to 10K views. And... He's always like that. And yeah, I have to channel that more, you know? I have to, yeah. Life's about adventure. I, I can, I, Cause I hate complacency. Like that's what that's, that's ultimately my biggest fear is that, it, yeah, I, so I have that, that disenfranchised white guy, you know, punching the other white guy in the face, like Fight Club. Part of that, like that white, I still got that, you know? I, I even, I'm multicultural, but I relate to those people quite a bit. Um, I, but I bring up the New York thing to try to like, I, I wanna see, I think that's great advice about um, how you should go only go into a business where you know you can dominate the market. That's the, in my experience, that's the best mentality to approach uh, something and, and make money out of it. Like I'm gonna dominate this market. Every time I've been successful, it's only been with that mentality. But how that's would you- That's why I actually thought, I actually, the one time, I didn't even know you well back then, but the one time I said, this guy's a is when you hopped onto our, in our court and you're like, I'm gonna be a streamer. And I'm like, yeah, he's getting views. It's not going to last. You know, he, he hasn't been doing this for years. He's a YouTuber. He's an editor. And then you took over this market and I'm like, oh, shit. You know, you know how many Twitch streamers I grew up with that are, they're working regular jobs now. And they just watched you come into the market, take their shit. That was insanity. Um, I don't think many people switch professions like that. Like, man, I want to say names so bad. Chat, who's a YouTuber who went live and you hated it? There's so many. <laughs> There's Anytime a, I see YouTuber, I'm like, you're not cut out for this. This is the lion's den. And then, yeah, you just, that's why I think Sneakwell, if you're that type that can adapt to any market, pick the most lucrative market. Because I cannot adapt to any market. There's Zerka markets. But if I could adapt to any market, I will just go for highest return on investment. That's what I'll go for. I wouldn't just stream in this, you know? Like if I, if, if Sneakwell's the brain that can just learn Download Andrew Tate, steal five mil, download Fresh Fit, down. If you have that kind of brain, if you're that adaptive type, just go to the one that makes you the most money first, and that money will literally fund whatever passions you have. If you're trying to like do this passion from the ground up, like a musician, you might be poor till 40, bro. It's not a good life at all. What, how do you money. tell how do you tell that, that fight club white guy to go and seek chaos and, and get into the fire? Where, because he, I've noticed, we were watching earlier in the stream, you know the self-improvement YouTuber Hamza, I'm sure you do. He's like hosting events and then guys are like beating their chests and they're running around yeah. shirtless in the park. And I think it's good ultimately. They're, they're trying to go and capture that. I think people call it cringe because it's easy because this is goofy. You see grown men running around shirtless with like strangers in a park. Uh, and they should just be, you know, quitting their job and then moving to a new city. That's the real way to get that sort of chaos that they're trying to pay like 5K for from a YouTuber that they meet online. Um, is is it bad that they're doing that? No, but it's, it's obviously goofy to some reason, but how do you tell people to go in, and find the chaos? Like, they, I'm sure you, you stumble across those people. What should they do? Should they, should they, there, there's conflicting advice online. Some people say that you should keep your nine to five job and then do a side hustle. I'm of the belief to go all in. I say quit the, and I, I wouldn't advise that for most people because I know it's not gonna work. But if I'm speaking to the one person that does have potential, I would say get rid of that safety net. Having that safety net mentally is going to give you limitations mentally that will prevent you from finding your full potential. You need to get rid of that safety net completely and then just jump off the plane and figure out how you're going to land. Uh, go all in. You know, Go to that new city. 
Go move it. Take a risk. You know, risk your life. Risk something. Go into the octagon with Sean Strickland and figure it out. And then you're going to see how you come out of the better end of it. But if you're going to be honest, 95% of people are not cut out for that. I think it's way better. Man, it's way better to go $20,000 in debt by walking through the process of individuation. Your business may be failed, that city you moved to got expensive love. It's way better to do it than spend the rest of your life regretting it. And dude, if you're a problem solver, you will fix it. I guarantee you Sneakle, as a YouTuber, has gone in debt and shit and bounced back, or he's lost a lot and bounced back, right? These high risk, high risk, all in is the only mindset, but, if you're a phony, you'll go all in on something you're not passionate about, and someone with real passion is gonna come and humiliate you. So you better know what the f and and you know, like what would you do for free all day? I think Steve and I would literally stay on stream for free. Maybe not all day, but we we love this shit, you know. Yeah, sometimes I I, I do. Like I'll, I'll hop in uh, Discord with Sonny and just talk to people. Sometimes I do. Like the the stimulation that you get from this is is unlike any other. It, it puts you on your toes. It, it's important to stay like that always. And I don't, I don't want to lose that forever. I, I always want to be able to, to challenge myself. I think streaming is an easy job, but it's the hardest job on earth if you're thinking of progressing as a streamer because your job is burnout, but you have to remain creative. Those two do not go well together, especially live streaming. And people are like, you guys just sitting there. It's actually like a thousand knives telling you, turn the stream off, blah, blah, blah every second sometimes. But you know, you gotta overcome it. I'm telling you this, man, start. It's not the project, it's who you become after the project. That's your bread, that's your second flame, that's your second nature. When something's second nature, you're doing it autonomously, you will win, just start. And I, I'm giving like, I feel like a phony saying this because I didn't do it. I was like making garbage money, like 20,000 a month, doing 12 hour streams a day on Twitch. But when I woke up and my twin brother's like, get the out. these guys are making more bread than you they're not even funny and yeah i, I got out because I, I felt humiliated he's like what do you a thousand viewers for a year and and now now i make more than him I, i'm about to end zerka plug your stuff before for our end stream we've been live for six hours now thezerkaofficial.com we do only these kind of self-development talks i don't troll as much on my website because honestly it's snake behavior it's snake behavior if you guys are just laughing and not going to the next level so this is my calling. I gotta I gotta integrate the hero archetype more, less of the outlaw trickster shit. And here's the truth: your unconscious will one day unravel. So if you don't leave your room for five years, it's gonna snap, and you're gonna do something crazy, and then you'll be free, right? Then you you know life will begin. But it's better you you actively start. You gotta do it. What is masculinity? It's a temperament. It means active. What is feminine? It means passive. It's not like genitalia, bro. If you don't do anything, you sit on your ass, remember this, whether you do 12 hours of work or zero hours of work, you feel the same levels of fatigue. And I make the case that when you're not working and unemployed, you're way more tired than when you're busting ass. I'm telling you. Twitter.com slash official.